unnecessary. Also makes a good mirror. Today, we're doing something brand new on the channel. I'm so excited. We've not done it here before. We're testing some new wax, y'all. Hey everybody, it's Carrie. I'm the owner and maker of Couture Home and Body. And today, let's just get into it. I am testing Hive and Honey's Natural Soy Titan 5230 Wax. Oh my gosh, I am very excited. I only bought a pound. I really appreciate that you can just buy one pound at a time instead of having to commit to like 10 or 12 pounds. That's usually the min at other candle supply companies. I would much rather spend less money on a wax, because what if I absolutely hate it? Then I'm stuck with like 10 more pounds or whatever. So, so there's nothing wrong with 444. I'm not looking to switch waxes, but I was interested if there was a wax that maybe performed a little bit better than the 444 in terms of like reset. And if I can get even better cold throw and hot throw, great, I'm open. If not, I'm still sticking with my 444. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stack rank the three main companies that I use and ship from against Hive and Honey, just in terms of price, tax, shipping, all of that. As a candle maker, when you are shopping for supplies, you should always be shopping around to see who has the best prices today, this month or this week, especially with shipping. USPS just increased their shipping. I mean, UPS, everyone has been increasing their shipping across the board. So I definitely wanna remind you and implore you if you don't, try to find suppliers that are closest to you because the shipping is going to get you every time, especially vessels. So Candle Science all up, it will cost $172.75 for one case of the 45 pound 444 wax. Compared to Lone Star, which would be $149.90. So that's like a $23 difference. So already we are not going to be ordering from Candle Science. And then Cal Candle, all up, it's $144.78, which is so interesting that it's actually cheaper than Lone Star. Yeah, it's $5 cheaper from Cal Candle. All right, and Hive and Honey. The first con for me is that this comes in a slab. I'm not a fan. I don't wanna cut up my wax. Oh my God. It's weird because in the picture, it shows flakes. And so I was convinced like, they're flakes, it's flakes. I don't have to cut up a slab. Uh, here are the pros. It has a bright white color, so I do like that. Uh, the 444, it can be sort of like a off-white. And on the website, Angie has some really great maker notes. She also has wick notes as well, like the wick testing. All right, what I also really like about this is it does have a higher melt point. It has a melting point of 127, which is great. Living in Texas now, it's really hot here. It's still hot here. So eight to 10% fragrance load, though they have found 9% to be the best. I always test and start with eight, so we'll start there today. Here's the other thing that is really bonkers to me is that it can also be used for melts. So we're gonna make some wax melts today as well. And they're recommending the CD, the Eco, and the HTP wicks. When I was originally testing waxes and wicks, when I landed on the 444, I didn't like the Eco wicks. I found that they didn't burn hot enough and I didn't get a great hot throw. I've not tried HTP wicks. I personally really like the CD wicks. Um, I tried UltraCore. They burned really hot and I it lessened the burn time that I got in the candle. So uh, yeah, let's see what else. They're saying heat to 175, add fragrance and stir for 15 to 30 seconds. I won't do that. I'm gonna, I usually heat it to like 195 because by the time you add the oil, it'll drop the temperature. You wanna make sure adding it at 185 is perfect. And if it's a little hotter, that's fine too. And I will stir for two minutes. It's just what I, I just think it's weird. All right, instead of turning on my Melta, which we're only making a couple of things, it's totally unnecessary, uses a lot of power. Um, we're gonna use this little baby Tuato Melter. I love this thing. If you're not in the Facebook groups, we've been chatting about it. It is so fantastic. Um, it comes with an eight foot cord. So if you have an outlet like right at your work table or workbench or whatever, um, it, it'll be fine, but if it's down below, you'll probably want to get an extension cord, which is what I'm going to do today. 
So I will have a link to this down below. Don't forget to tick the box that gives you, I think it's 10 or $15 off. It makes that little guy 30 bucks. So. Not quite a pound, a little bit under. Cut this up. My, my word. Okay. Not too bad, a little crumbly. And then I'm just gonna kinda go down the, down the middle here. So I'm going to measure out wax for the melts and the container. So the wax is, it's definitely hotter than the flakes, obviously because this is in a block form, but um, it's not too crumbly. I know this is just from, this is just because the way I cut it, but um, I think I could probably use something less aggressive, <laughs> but yeah. All right, we are using pumpkins and patchouli. So if you see the oil, it's clear, it's not too viscous, it's kind of thin. Um, this isn't a bad thing or a good thing, it's just a thing I think to notice um, as you're working with different oils. If it's more viscous or thick, you might need to wick up. But this one is nice and thin, so I'm not anticipating any issues uh, with wick. All right, so we are going to turn this on. Dump all of our wax in. I'm gonna put the lid on. We're gonna let that heat up and we'll be back. All right, so this is about four and a half minutes and this is nine and a half ounces of wax so you can see it's fully melted now and it is on the first setting i had the lid on i do want to take a temp reading just to see so right now it's at 192 just sort of hovering here actually it's starting to drop but we have cooled down to about 131 The fact that you can use this as a melt as well is very trippy to me. So this is the tester that I poured. Pretty good. I almost feel like I could wait till like 120 to pour because see how it has just like a little bit of like a divot. I think it would be fine like if there was a wick in here but that's pretty, pretty dang good. So this took about 30 minutes to get a full melt. I am using a hot plate style. This does both. You can put the jar right on here or you can put melts in the little dish, but you can take this off. I'm needing to test this with a tea light warmer. Okay, it's been a couple of days. I am just gonna pop these out. See how they're really hot? Bit of a snap there. Pretty hot, like a lot hotter than 494. All right, let's do a test. So th these are 10%. I'm gonna stack them up against the 8% and see um, how it goes. So I just wanna show you, this is the Titan wax. These are the wax melts I made. They leave a lot of residue behind. I only use this for wax melts. And you can see that the 494 just pops out nice and clean. Just think that's really interesting to compare. Now I have more work to do. <laughs> All right, y'all, we are here. We've reached the end of the Titan 5230 soy wax testing. How'd it stack up?
All right, let's get into it. The 5230 as a wax melt performed okay. It's not better than the 494. I've always test everything at 8%, so I tested it at 8%, and the hot throw wasn't as strong, and also, if you use a ceramic melter, this will not work very well. It took over 30 minutes to get a full, to get fully melted. Um, I just don't think, I think it needs direct fire, direct heat. Um, not that that's bad, but I think if I were a customer and my melts weren't melting after like 10 minutes, that might be strange. But if you do choose to use 5230 as a wax melt wax, you would just need to uh, educate your customers so they can anticipate and know what to expect. Um, 8% was okay. I upped it to 10% and I did put it in a um, tea light warmer. So I had two going in different rooms. I had the 8% with the tea light and 10% with the tea light. The 10% obviously performed way better. It has a really great hot throw. It's about an eight and a half out of 10 versus the eight, which is like a seven out of 10. The hot throw about a seven out of 10. It just wasn't strong enough. And so comparing to the 494, pumpkins and patchouli performed very well. It's about a nine and a half out of 10. And you know, pumpkins and patchouli, uh, it's not like it's super strong and it's not light. It's sort of in that medium range strength for a fragrant soil. It is so freaking good. I think it's one of my favorites for the fall. When I had it going, when Pete walked in, he was like, whoa, what's that? And I was like, ooh, okay, yeah. That's how you know, right? When it passes the husband test. <laughs> so here's another test that I did. I poured another one of my favorite like year round all application fragrance oils is the Rebel Rose from Black Tie Bond. I always have a Rebel Rose lying around because I absolutely love it. It's, it's just so good, it's sexy. It makes me feel good to smell it or to smell like it. So I poured a tester at 9% in the 5230 and then I poured another one at 9% in my 444. So let's talk about this, you guys. This was very interesting. They did not smell the same. So the 5230 versus the 444, well, I, I know the oil and they smelled similar. The 5230 wasn't like the true to life smell that I know Rebel Rose to be in my 444. <laughs> so the cold throw is light. It's about a seven out of 10. For me, the ba is I want things to be at an eight or above because if I am a customer and I'm coming to smell something and it it's like a seven, my fear, because I don't know, that when I light it, it's still gonna be light and I people like strong scented candles. So that's a con for the 5230. Yeah, seven out of 10. The hot throw was an eight out of 10, which is good. It meets that minimum threshold, but it didn't perform better or stronger than 444. Rebel Rose and 444, the rose. It throws so good. So my Rebel Rose is a nine out of 10. It's funny, if I drop this to 8%, my hot throw jumps to nine and a half out of 10. So, you know, depending upon your wick and your wax, you do wanna test different variables because a higher fragrance load doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get a stronger hot throw. So just be sure you're including these kinds of different variables when you're testing a new, a new oil and certainly a new wax. <laughs> Always check the wick before you start upping your fragrance load. It's usually gonna be the wick that you need to swap out. So yeah, it's really strange. The 5230, it, it was like, it was more spicy than like that floral sexy with a little spice when it's, when it's lit with the hot throw. Yeah, it's just such a subdued version and I feel like the 5230 just did not do the Rebel Rose justice and that's kind of sad. Let's talk about reset after the burn. What happens? What does this wax look like? And I can tell you, this performs a lot better than 444. It's not super pocky, chunky, weird. Around the wick, it does have a little bit more clumping, but it looks like mostly smooth. It doesn't look like it had a stroke or anything. Can you see around here how it just has a few little, it's like kind of lumpy? I mean, if that's the worst case of it, bring it on. This is my eight and a half ounce jaw. I knocked it after it had, after I blew it out. So don't mind all the, um, the wax on the side. That was me user error. You can see it's like a little pocky, but it's not like 
the worst. Like I feel like 444 looks way worse than that. That for sure is a definite improvement from the 444. However, because the cold throw and the hot throw are not performing like I've been reading about. I would say that the, this is not something I would switch to. I would stick with the 444. I will say this, a lot of people are blending something else with the 5230, whether that's beeswax or, an, or a coconut wax. Um, I'm not a wax blender. If it doesn't perform on its own pure, it's not for me. I don't want to blend. I feel like that's super fussy. Um, and in terms of like production and scaling, having to blend waxes is very unappealing to me. It was fun to test, but it's definitely not for me. And for those that are blending, comment down below. Let other folks know what you're blending it with, what your percentages are. Um, you know, we don't gatekeep here. So super appreciate you sharing, you know, your knowledge and then letting other people test. If you wanted to blend, the 5230, it's definitely not for me. The 5230 underperformed for me. And so I am very excited to continue my wax testing journey with the Soy 10, which will be coming very soon. And also the NW58 from Northwood, which I'm super excited to share those results with you as well. So if you enjoyed this video, click here to keep hanging out with me. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Bye.